Welcome to Arthritis Now. I'm your host, Kyle Langan, and today's guest is Dr. Timothy Griffin of the Oklahoma Medical Research Foundation. We're going to be speaking to him about his work in osteoarthritis. Hi, Dr. Griffin. Thank you very much for being here with us today. We really appreciate your time. Hi, thank you. <laughs> and, and what is your current research um, focused on? So my lab is really interested in understanding the causes of osteoarthritis and trying to develop new treatments for osteoarthritis. And our work is really focused on understanding how aging and obesity increase the risk of osteoarthritis, as well as understanding how exercise um, can help reduce that risk as, or serve as a, a helping us discover new potential treatments for osteoarthritis. And, and what made you want to study osteoarthritis specifically? Well, you know, like most things in life, it wasn't planned. <laughs> um, I had uh, been in a lab during my postdoc, which is the phase between getting my PhD degree and going on to become a, an independent investigator. And I had been in a lab studying uh, animal locomotion, and I knew I wanted to get a new experience. Um, and, and so I joined a lab that was studying osteoarthritis. And what I was excited about that lab is that they looked at how um, biomechanics influence the health of the joint tissue and, and how obesity may be playing a role in causing this disease. And so I, hadn't, I had never studied osteoarthritis before joining that lab, but I really fell in love with this disease because I realized how important um, it was in terms of impacting other people's health. After you got your PhD and you were kind of transitioning, um, you know, ANRF, that's when you received the ANRF grant. Um, can you tell me what that, what that was like for you? This is a really important time where we're trying to um, get some money to get the research off the ground and to hire people into the lab. The grant from ANRF helped me to hire a postdoc and to, to get her started off the ground, uh, not only in research in my lab, but to help with her career as well. So it's really one of these kind of snowball effects where a little bit of the seed money um, helps uh, our research and helps start the careers of others that will help them stay in this field. I'm doing a little bit of research on your research, and um, a big component of what your study is is joint loading. Um, could you explain what that is? So we use the term joint loading just to describe when you walk around, you're putting loads on your joints, and and so really that's what we mean is it's the the forces that um, are experienced in those tissues within the joint, and in particular a lot of the tissues that we study in my lab are the, the articular cartilage, so it's that, that tissue that lines the ends of the bones. Um, and then we also study, um, actually part of the research that, that has come off of our work with the ANRF grant is the fat pad within the knee joint. So this is another tissue within the joint that could have a profound impact on the health of the joint. And we're understanding, trying to understand how mechanical forces, when we load our joints, impact the health of this fat pad as well as the articular cartilage. Okay. And so I guess, there, would there be like two, like a good and a bad kind of joint loading? Like a good would be like exercise, but bad would be like obesity? That sure, yeah. So we think, uh, traditionally we thought about one of the main reasons that obesity increases the risk of osteoarthritis is that it increases the loads on the joint. And, and it does, but it doesn't always do it so in ways that we uh, would predict or fully understand. Um, so as people gain weight, they can actually change the way in which they walk that reduces the loads on the joints um, but they also adapt how much they walk. And so uh, obesity is associated with reduced levels of physical activity. So it may be not only that we have increased um, unhealthy types of loads across the joint because there's increased loads, but there's also decreased amounts of the healthy kind of cyclic loads or the walking loads. I know that you also are studying uh, free radicals. And can you kind of say how the, the joint loading kind of affects that or how they're related? Sure. So, so you know, free radicals are these reactive molecules that are in the body, and we typically associate them with kind of the, the, the bad part of diseases. You know, the free radicals cause damage, and that's why you take your antioxidant supplements to try to um, combat the, the, the damaging effect of free radicals. But we know that radical, these free radicals, again, these reactive molecules are present at all times within the body, and they serve as um, important ways in which cells communicate um, kind of within the cell as well as potentially to other cells. You know, tissues that are mechanically sensitive when they are loaded, that they can actually uh, increase the production of these free radicals. And 
at kind of low levels or more what we call physiologic levels of joint loading, that can be a good signal. But when it gets to be more of a damaging load, like a load that's um, too, too great, so maybe you, know, you, um, you bang your knee against the ground when you fall or you get in a car accident, that, that can lead to even higher levels of these free radicals that are produced and it can cause damage. So it's this balance between the good part of free radical production that serves as a signal to the cell to the bad part of free radicals where it's kind of dysregulated and now it's just higher levels that are, that are normally seen within the cell. And so that balance is really important. And we were trying to understand how different types of mechanical load can be protective and at what point it transitions to becoming damaging. Thanks for watching part one of our interview with Dr. Griffin. Stay tuned in two weeks for part two, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and share this video on Facebook and Twitter to help raise arthritis awareness.